Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Red Runner Sports, and today we're comparing three highly cushioned shoes. We have the Nike Invincible 3, the New Balance More V4, and the A6 Nimbus 25. Let's roll with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and the style synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Now, the reason we're taking a look at these neutral road running shoes today is that they fall into a rather unique running shoe category, which I like to call Ultra Max Cushion, which all that boils down to is they have some of the largest midsoles around with just more foam than almost anything else. The Invincible kind of blew people's minds when it first came out. The More literally is named the More because it has more foam than almost all of their New Balance shoes. And the Nimbus, this is the thickest Nimbus that basics has ever made so i'm excited to get into and kind of dive into what separates these because they are rather different and kind of lets you understand which ultra max cushion shoe you should go with they work really well for recovery days those slower efforts so those times you just want a ton of cushion on your foot to not feel the road at all as far as price goes the nike invincible does cost the most at 180 dollars the nimbus is 160 and the more is 150 these shoes are about anywhere between, I'd say, $30 to $50 more compared to your traditional trainer. So just keep that in mind. But you do get a lot more shoe with a lot more cushioning for that extra bit in price. And even though these are massive running shoes, they're not terribly heavy. The Invincible is only 10.6 ounces. The Nimbus is 10.5 and the More is only 10.4, which I think is actually pretty good for how large, again, these shoes are. So which of these thick shoes is the thickest? Well, stack height is a little bit tricky. People measure it in different ways, but to the best of my ability, it appears that the Nimbus has the largest stack height with 41 millimeters in the heel and an 8 millimeter drop, while the Invincible has 40 millimeters in the heel with a 9 millimeter drop, and the More has 38 millimeters in the heel with only a 4 millimeter drop which means the more has the most amount of foam under the forefoot, but the least amount under the heel, if that makes sense, just because it has that four millimeter drop compared to the Nimbus Invincible with their relatively high drops of eight and nine millimeters respectively. Moving on to the uppers, I found all the shoes to fit true to size. And I will say, I think the more just has a bit more volume to the upper itself compared to the Invincible and Nimbus. As far as breathability goes, I think the Invincible comes in at number one, the more at number two, and then the Nimbus with probably the most warm upper at number three. Now, I didn't think any of these shoes were super breathable. The Invincible was okay. You can actually kind of see through the shoe if you hold it up to the light. It has decent breathability through midfoot and toe box. The more you would expect just by an eyeball test to have better breathability than the Invincible, and that's not the case because uh, the midfoot has this internal kind of a synthetic plastic lining, which prevents breathability through the midfoot. However, the toe box I did define to have about average breathability. And then the Nimbus, on the other hand, is a knit upper, which is rather elastic, very comfortable, but it's not the most breathable and does run a bit warm. The tongues on these shoes are quite different, with my favorite tongue being on the Nimbus. It's a stretch knit material, extremely elastic, very comfortable, fully gusseted, and I really just like this new implementation. We saw it on the 24, and I'm happy to see they kept it here on the 25. People will probably either love it or hate it. I personally really like it just because of how it feels. Really easy to get your foot in and out of this shoe, and I think those large holes on the top give you some airflow and ventilation because the rest of that Nimbus upper is rather warm. We go on to the New Balance More V4. We have a very classic New Balance tongue. It's lightly padded, non-gusseted, and rather low profile. Doesn't come too far up, which I do appreciate. So nothing too much right home about here. I think gets the job done, and uh, I think it's just a solid tongue overall. The tongue on the Invincible is non-gusseted, has a moderate amount of padding, has a really wide top rectangular-like shape, which I think is very important for one big reason. And that reason is the lacing system or the plastic overlays at the top of the lacing system created a lot of pain for me because on the inside of the upper at the very top, they did this fused plastic kind of overlay on the internal side, which really rubs your foot the wrong way if the tongue is not positioned perfectly. Now it is, like I said, a really wide rectangular like tongue. So you're able to get it positioned to relieve that kind of irritation and pressure. But if it moves around or if you just don't have it situated in the right spot, it does create a lot of irritation. So I think the tongue plays a great role here in kind of preventing that pain. But I'm kind of disappointed to see that you have to have the tongue situated perfectly to not feel this plastic overlay at the top of the lacing slots. Now, if I had to rank all of these uppers with regard to comfort, lockdown, enjoyability, if that's even a word, I'd probably say the Nimbus comes in at number one, the More V4 comes in at number two, and then the Invincible 3 comes in number three. 
The reason I liked the Nimbus the most is because even though it does run a bit warm, that knit-like upper is incredibly soft and comfortable, hug my foot in a very comfortable way. And like I talked about before, the stretch knit tongue is incredibly unique, fully gusseted and just stayed in place and allowed me to get my foot in and out of the shoe fairly easily without sacrificing lockdown. I felt my felt like my foot was very connected to this midsole. I'll also say that the ankle and Achilles area has tons of padding and it was just comfortable through and through. I really appreciated the extra volume to the upper here on the Moore V4, felt very accommodating, and it felt in general like a very traditional engineered mesh experience, rather like comfortable, kind of checked all the boxes, nothing too crazy, nothing too bad, just kind of middle of the road, classic, comfortable, reliable. The tongue, my one minor grape is, I wish it was gusted, it's a little bit floppy, but it's minimal, stays out of the way, I think does a solid job. So all in all, it's a very comfortable, very solid, very traditional engineered mesh upper here with just a tad bit more volume compared to these other options options. The Invincible, on the other hand, has a very well-structured like fit with heavy stitching from the toe box to the midfoot. It's non-elastic at all, even though it is a knit material. Sometimes knit shoes do have a little bit of wiggle room to them, and that is not the case here. It keeps your foot extremely well-contained. Now, the reason I didn't rank it higher is because of that kind of lacing section on the inside of the upper towards the top. On both sides, they use this synthetic plastic-like overlay to keep everything together, and it's just enough to irritate your foot if the tongue is not perfectly in place. You really do have to make sure everything is aligned and it did drive me nuts trying to make sure that my ankle wouldn't rub that area. So make sure you have a good thick pair of socks, make sure the tongue is perfectly in place. And I do wish maybe they would gusset it or do something else to just try to keep everything from interacting with your ankle. But otherwise, I think it works quite well. Again, it feels very much like a structured knit upper. It doesn't really hug your foot like we see on the Nimbus, kind of provides kind of this dome-like structure around that keeps your foot contained if it happens to slide to either side. We do have three different kinds of foam in front of us today. On the Nimbus 25, we have Flight Foam Blast Plus. On the Morvi 4, we have Fresh Foam X. And then on the Invincible 3, we have Zoom X. So which of these foams is the bounciest? Well, I do have to say, I think it's gonna be Zoom X here in first place, followed by Flight Foam at Blast Plus in second. And then third is gonna be Fresh Foam X. I do think most people will probably agree with me here, but let me know in the comments if you would reorder these in a different way. I do have to say the Invincible series from Nike provides an experience unlike anything else out there in big part two, that large slab of Zoom X foam in the midsole. Now, a lot of companies are coming up with different compounds to try to catch up, but I will say I think Zoom X does provide a very special ride and sensation. It really does feel like you're kind of running on a large bouncy marshmallow. Zoomex is very soft, has a ton of energy return, a lot of squish to it, and it almost has kind of like a hollow sound to it when you walk or run on it just because it isn't the most dense foam ever, which allows it to be rather light, yet still springy and resilient. So if you haven't tried this setup before, give it a shot just because it is just a fun shoe to run in. I think, again, really the best way to kind of put it, it feels like you're running on soft, bouncy marshmallows. It's just a unique shoe. And part two, the density of the foam and just how the largeness of the shoe feels in comparison to the weight, which even though it is around, what is it, 10.6 ounces, it doesn't feel all that heavy just because that weight is displaced with this really wide surface area on the outsole. Now I will say it's not the most stable shoe. Yes, you do have the wide outsole on that plastic clip towards the heel, but if you have weak ankles or if you do need stability, you might want to go in a different direction. I also really enjoyed my time with the Nimbus 25 and its FF Blast Plus midsole. Now, the biggest difference between this and the Invincible is the FF Blast Plus is going to be a much more dense material and not as soft and springy compared to Zoom X. However, I really do like this compound. It's a little bit more stable. It's a little bit more manageable compared to Zoom X, which I think some runners might appreciate. And it's noticeably more lively compared to EVA foam or other traditional running shoe midsoles. So I think this is a big step in the right direction. I will say this is probably my favorite Nimbus that has ever existed. It just has a nice level of cushioning and a solid level of energy turn while you use it. It also has a trick up its sleeve, which is called Pure Gel. So if you're a fan of Asics, you notice how they always put gel on the heel and there's always a small dot under the forefoot. That has been done away with, which I'm happy to see. They now have something called Pure Gel, which sits directly under your heel. This is supposed to help with shock absorption, really absorb the initial landing. So I didn't personally notice it. I'm sure it has some kind of impact on my running economy when I am using it, but you can't noticeably yes, differentiate it or feel it under your foot, but it is there and is supposed to help with just, again, the overall shock absorption. I saw some tests where they drop like an egg from like know, a few meters up. It will land and just didn't splat. So it really is geared toward not so much energy turn, but 
energy absorption. But overall, the long and short of it is I really like this Nimbus. It's a bit more manageable compared to the Zoom X. Not as lively, but it does give you a nice level of just, I guess, pop and energy turn as you run. And last, we have the Moore V4 with its Fresh Foam X midsole. Now, in my opinion, Fresh Foam X isn't the liveliest or bounciest midsole compound, especially out of the ones we're taking a look at today. But I will say it is very soft and incredibly comfortable. So if you're someone who doesn't want to wrangle in a bouncier phone and wants a very somewhat traditional soft midsole, I think the more V4 will work well for you. It's also relatively stable. They did add some stability mechanisms, mainly a large lateral foam wall and a medial foam wall, plus an extremely wide forefoot and heel section. So you have a large area to land on. You also have more foam under the forefoot compared to these other options, just because the more before has only a four millimeter drop. So it's also a bit of a flatter shoe, which I think some people might appreciate. And maybe if you're walking more, if you just don't want that higher drop, I think that's where this particular setup comes in quite well. So let me know down in the comments, which ultra max cushion option would you pick and why? I'd love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.